just to show we are having a socially safe uh, episode, Halloween episode of All Saints Cooking. And in honor of All Saints Day, I am La Katrina, AKA Lisa Hurley. <laughs> So today we're making a uh, stuffed squash uh, sausage um, or squashage, which Kip pointed out sounded very Native American, which is also another aspect of this. But um, I grew up with acorn squash. Uh, typically it was cooked right side up with a patty of sausage and a whole lot of brown sugar. And I don't know if anybody else had it that way, but that was kind of like, that was my mom's go-to recipe. But I always loved acorn squash and it's kind of a fall thing. Um, but I did look this up and actually acorn squashes also are known as pepper squashes or Des Moines squashes. And even though they're considered a winter squash, they are in the same hereditary or uh, species family as um, summer squashes. So as you can see, I've gone through steps one and two prior to this because these take about 45 to 50 minutes to roast. And I didn't want to just stand around and stare at the, uh, the oven because they never cook any faster. But these are fork tender. I'm gonna flip them over. So they're like little boats and let them cool off a little bit. These are super tender actually. All right, move it. Okay, so I'm just flipping these over. This makes four really healthy servings. And I'm going to kind of flatten them a little bit since they are tender to kind of keep them upright because if they tip over in the baking process when they're stuffed, then stuff goes everywhere. All right, so those are ready to go. I'm going to start with a pretty big skillet. It's probably not the biggest skillet, but it's fine for a pound of ground meat. So as I said, this, um, this is a different recipe. I like sweet and savory, um, a little bit of sweet, not a lot, but there's, you know, if you look at, um, on the internet on how to, you know, how to cook a squash and recipes for squash, acorn squashes um, are almost always better roasted. I think, all, I think all vegetables are better roasted just because it causes that sugar to come out and caramelize. And it's just so sweet right there. And then the stuffing is the savory. And it's not particularly spicy. I use Jimmy Dean's, just all natural. Can you read it? Is it reverse? Hey. So what we're gonna do first is brown the meat. And you all, I, I don't know if you noticed, but I did wash my hands okay. for 28 seconds. We did that before the camera started rolling, but it happened, I have witnesses. Yeah. So it's a nonstick pan. Um, at this point, I don't feel like I need to add a little oil or anything like that, but after this cooks down, I'm gonna drain it and cook the onions and the other vegetables in it. So we can open up the mics and have conversation if you would like, because I'll, you know. <laughs> I'll tell you how my mom used to cook acorn squash. Yes, please. And I never knew you could do anything else with it at the time. I, know I didn't investigate. But all she did, she put that big hunk of butter in there and the brown sugar. Right. That's that and was she butter poured the inside. And then, but she didn't, she didn't pre cook them. She just did the whole thing roasted that way, open face. Yeah. With a little bas as a little basket. And yeah, I thought that's exactly fun. what my I thought that was great. It was, was a great so introduction to a vegetable. Just yeah. load it up with some sugar and butter. <laughs> Knock my uh, crown off there. This is getting there. So the cool thing about this dish 
is, um, well, it's, it's cool that we can do this when we have a household that doesn't all like the same stuff, is you can get it to the point where you've stuffed it and let it cool down completely and then um, wrap it in aluminum foil and put it in the freezer and then do the final baking later. So you cut out all the prep work and you've got kind of a quick meal. It takes a little longer to warm up, of course, because once this goes in, it's only gonna take 20 minutes to be done done because it's all warm inside and fully cooked. But it's a great pull out of the freezer meal. We've kind of been like trying to discover as many of those like prep meals you can do on the weekend. Just make, and, and that's so weird because my commute is nothing, right? So, but I think we're all kind of working longer hours, even though we're not commuting anymore. We're using our commuting hours at our desk. So it's just nice to get up, go pull it out of the freezer and warm it up. This is almost done. All right, pink is all gone. I've got a strainer over here. I can smell it from here, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I just added the onions, kept uh, the, um, we're at medium high on the heat and the celery to the pan that I cooked the sausage in so we get those flavors. And I'm gonna just mix them up a little bit and let them cook about three to four minutes to get translucent. So while I was reading up on the Day of the Dead or Dios los Muertos, uh, I learned something interesting is the Katrina character, which is very, very popular, um, is kind of designed with the skull motif, but a lot of decoration. And um, the, the character itself or herself was actually um, a caricature and kind of a political statement against upper class Mexican women being pretentious and not holding themselves uh, mightier than thou. So they were making fun of Katrina's, or in this world, we call them Karen's, I guess, but, <laughs> right? So it was a skull with a very big hat normally. So it's kind of morphed into this thing um, with sugar skulls. The tradition is that you, you decorate it with uh, things that remind you of the, the ancestor you're honoring with it. So that's a gift, a traditional gift. Another traditional gift is, um, tama well, traditional meal would be tamales. So I should have made tamales, but as I said, this all kind of got pulled together at the last minute in a weird way. Um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. And the holiday actually spans the first and the second of November, but a lot of places celebrate it today too. All right, that's pretty good. That's nice and translucent. I'm gonna add the mushrooms. This is about half a box. I chopped it up first because I like everything to have the same bite size. That way you get a little bit of everything on your fork and that mushroom doesn't flip off and land on your shirt. And it smells so good. We've got two thirds of the Holy Trinity, right? Does anybody know what the Holy Trinity is? Carrots instead of mushrooms. Right. And onions and celery. Celery. Well, if you mm -hmm. could argue that it's more than one. Yeah, onions, garlic, and right. And oh, then, it, I don't think it's garlic. No, it's not garlic. It depends on what culture you're in. Because right. some places it's the, it's the Trinity, and other places it is sofrito. So, yeah. so there is a variety of, the, of what the three important Red ones peppers, are. Green peppers, yellow peppers. Yeah. So I always think of it in terms of New Orleans food. So it's green peppers, celery, and onion. 
Yep. But everything has a ton of garlic and a ton of everything else too. But it's that smell, right? When yep. you cook those three things together, you're just, your mouth starts watering. Like, oh, it's going to be so good. Is it, is it the, um, the celery, onion, and carrot in France and it's mirepoix? That's it, exactly, yeah. mirepoix. Right. Mm -hmm. As opposed to Quebecois? As opposed to what? Qu Quebecois. I don't even know what that means. Quebec. Quebec. Oh, oh, oh. Quebec. Got it. <laughs> Look worth it with Canadians, can you tell? So the Sofrito in Puerto Rico, since it's not a cold weather place, there's no celery. But oh, there's yeah. yeah, there's like, and there's no carrots. So it's onions and they have this little pepper that's called the Cubanil. That's, mm -hmm. uh, it looks, it's a family of a habanero, but it's sweet. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's small, it's grown, it's, but it grows in hot weather. And then of course okay. some cilantro and um, onion. Yes. When we were uh, in Puerto Rico with our friends, the Aracas, um, one, of our, one of our excursions was a hike through the woods to, we had to go about a half mile through the woods, right? Yeah. Down a rocky cliff to get in our boats. We were going caving in boats, like in kayaks. Mm -hmm. um, really cool. Um, but as we're walking down this path with groups of people, you know, kind of two at a time, the Arakas are in front of us and Josh is like picking stuff off of bushes and eating it. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, you know, like green, green marbly things and leaves and like, um, like he's a boy scout, like he's a Puerto Rican boy scout. And he's like, you want a bite? I'm looking at this thing and it's like, kind of looks like a, a small unripened pear. And I'm like, no, Josh, I don't eat no, food no, thank you. <laughs> off the ground <laughs> or a tree. You know, I want to go home, scrub it, wash it. He was in his element. He was just like, oh, I ate these when I was a kid and peas, like little peas on the path. Like, not, that's not a farm. <laughs> that's a weed. Nope. He's like, nah, nah. He was so happy. So this is done. I am going to move that, move that, move it over to a bowl and let it cool a little bit because if I put the egg in it right now, the egg will fry and it'll be a little fried egg. So we don't want that to happen. We're going to let this cool. Done with pan. Put the sausage back in. It's been over there kind of cooling too. Now at this point, the only thing I've used salt and pepper on is the actual squash. Uh, I drizzled olive oil on them. I just salt, salted and peppered them very lightly. I don't find it necessary to add any additional salt to this recipe because the sausage itself is very seasoned and oh the parmesan cheese is kind of a salty cheese so if you like a little extra bite you might add a little more pepper and i do that a lot I, like everything i like has pepper in it there's a lot of pep noticeable pepper but that's a personal preference i think i'm going to add a little pepper talk myself into it. And for the sake of a cooking show, instead of using my hand, which I normally do to measure, I'm gonna use a quarter teaspoon. Okay, that's it. So this is starting to cool off as I stir it. And when I put the sour cream in, it's gonna cool the rest of the way off. Half a cup. If you wanna use lighter sour cream, it's gonna reduce the fat content. You're more than welcome to do that. All in all, this is a pretty healthy recipe. Um, in terms of uh, how you can lighten it and kind of control that. 
but a lot of fresh ingredients. All right, that's a half cup. Have you ever tried using Greek yogurt in it? Yeah, that would be perfectly fine. And you know what, Marion, I think I've done that. Like oh. I didn't have any sour cream and I was like, oh, and I did. And it was exactly the same. And that would definitely uh, Good. Good. boost Thank the protein and, and uh, boost the, the healthy aspect of it. Okay. So with the parm, it says a half cup. But I, it's going to be a half cup, and you're going to sprinkle some top on the top too. Put a half cup in to the mix, and there's going to be some garnish. This is just grated. Honestly, you could use fresh shredded, but this kind of adds a binder to it. Right, so instead of having breadcrumbs, which is common to put in a stuffing mix, this eliminates the bread, therefore eliminating the gluten, which is a problem for me. All right, egg. That's not a fork. Just gonna whip that up a little bit and pour that right in there. I keep losing my clown. All right, it's about ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and stuff these. And it's gonna be a very healthy portion. This is another area where you could shorten it by just making the mix and doing portions. So if it's just two people, it's one acorn squash, you could use half, freeze the other half and make the other two, one squash, two servings another time. Oh my goodness. These might have been a little on the small size, but uh, the squashes, but they were so cute because they were half green and half orange that I couldn't resist them. They're so cute. Watch it. I'm handling your food. <laughs> Don't ever make fun of the chef. All right. Sprinkle the last bit on. Okay. It's toward the back. <laughs> Can you find the lid for me, please? All right. Now they're ready. So that's about 20 minutes. I'm excited, Lisa. I have a squash here that I'm gonna use that with. Awesome. So I have a little spring mix and the recipe says you can use uh, almond slivers, but I found pine nuts and I love pine nuts. So we're just going to lightly toast these in the toaster oven. 
Oh, trivia. All right. Thank you, dear. Oh, I kind of gave, gave some of this away. All right, on your buzzers. What does Dia de los Muertos or Day of the Dead celebrate? Your ancestry. Here's your choices. Mexican independence, Halloween, honoring deceased relatives, the harvest season. Honoring, honoring deceased, deceased relatives. relatives. Lisa's not allowed to answer all of them. <laughs> okay, all right, I'll stop. Every other one. Answer silently. <laughs> all right, when, I did kind of give some of this away. When is Day of the Dead celebrated? October 31st, November 1 and 2, December 1st, or May 14th and 15th? November 1 and 2. All right, you guys are great. What is Pan de Muerto? Here are your options. A usually sweet bread made for Day of the Dead. The container offerings are uh, placed in, uh, in for a traditional altar. The icing on sugar skulls or the week Day of the Dead occurs in. Pan de Muerto. Bread. Number one, bread. Bread. Yes, indeedy. Bread means, pan means bread. Which of the following is not an element of traditional Dia de los Muertos altar? Marigold flowers, candles, bread of the dead, and shoelaces. I don't know, shoelaces, I'll guess. Correct. All right. What is an ofrenda? Am I pronouncing that correctly? Ofrenda. Is it a sugar skull? Yes. Day of the dead <laughs> altar, wood skull, or painted photograph? Are we going with sugar skull? Uh-huh. Oh. Nope. Nope, it was, uh, and I just lost it. It was the second one. It was not the sugar skull. The altar? The altar? What was it? It's the altar. Yeah. Where do people in rural Mexico traditionally celebrate the Day of the Dead? With altars in their homes, at a picnic, at their relatives' grave sites, at a local church, at a local cantina? All of the above. Grave site. <laughs> it's the most. It is a picnic. Let's see. It is. It's a picnic at the grave site. What is the purpose of a toy of toy skulls and skeletons in the celebration? These are the options. To introduce children to the concept of death without fear. Uh, as festive decorations. To place on top of graves of loved ones or to piggyback off a of Halloween motifs? First one. To introduce children to the concept of death without fear? Yeah. Correct. Hmm. All right. What does the sugar in sugar skulls represent? The sweetness of death, the candy that is, the, the can, that candy is the joy of life, <laughs> the importance <laughs> of food, or the sweetness of life? Sweetness of life. life. Sweetness of death, I would think, if it's Day yeah. of the Dead. The sweetness of life. Oh, okay. All right. What is the purpose of the marigold petals leading up to the altar? Is it to keep away bad luck? To make the house smell good? To help loved one's spirits find the altar? Or to keep animals away from the altar? Loved one's spirits. Loved one's spirits. Okay to the altar. Love loved ones. Okay. Mm -hmm. Correct. <laughs> All right. What is what recent, I don't know how recent this is, what recent movie used Dia de los Muertos themes to tell its story? Was it The Book of Life, The Secret Life of Pets, The Little Prince, or Strange Magic? I saw I know there, it was a kid's movie that had you know, all those images in it, but I don't know what the name of it was. The Book of Life. I was gonna say, can I answer, can I answer? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great movie too. All right, we're gonna make, make up the... Uh... 
plate. So half of good cooking or three quarters of good cooking is presentation, right? Right, right. Good look appetizing and delicious. Let's see how those, uh... yeah, they're toasty. Lisa, how long do you toast the pine nuts in the toaster oven? That was one minute and they are lightly tan. That worked out really well. Ta-da. Okay, yeah, because I've always just used the frying pan and hope it don't burn them. Yeah, that's a good way to do it too. But I never yeah, thought of the toaster oven. Burner. You're right, you do have to watch them carefully. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to use a little balsamic. Yeah. I, oh, wait, Cheryl just walked back. Cheryl, we need to, you to talk about Gruder Veltliner wine. He's going with this dish. Uh, hi there. Hi. Uh, <laughs> Gruner Veltliner is a crisp, dry, uh, but uh, very, uh, it's kind of lemony, you know, and it's spinach and so forth, but it's an excellent wine. Uh, and uh, I think it would, uh, to me, it goes with most anything. <laughs> but it's a, yeah. It's Maybe a, that's why they recommended it. It's an excellent, it's an excellent wine. And uh, it, it goes, it helps because of its crispness and the acidity, it helps to balance, uh, you know, foods that are like, uh, you know, that are, uh, that have more, uh, what's the word, fat and, you know, content like cheese and other Well, that's perfect. This is sausage. And, uh, yeah. Yep. Sausage, sausage and, would, cream and uh, yeah, it would Exactly. That would, yeah, it would go very well with sausage for that very reason. Yeah. Cool. I think we're looking for four one forty five. Rounding one twenty. This is exciting. All right. So normally you do this also let this sit for a few minutes. Just a what? Yeah. Please, you gotta get something a little more structure to it to take that off the pan because it's gotten nice and soft. Wow, it's a healthy pour for 11 a.m. Yeah, I really like the greener belt liner. I don't know if that's going to come into focus if you can see that. Here, really. Ah, yeah. yeah, there it is. There you go. Good. Wimmer, Wimmer on sale for $9.99. All right. So there we go. So a little crusty bread on the side, and it's the perfect bowl. Cheers. Beautiful. Wonderful. Look wonderful, <laughs> Lisa. That's good. It's not sweet. It sounds delicious. I mean, you know, your food. Thank you. One of my favorite meals. All right. That's it. All right. <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. Oh, I'm on my way, Lisa. I'm on my way. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Lunch. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And then I'll need a nap.